Well, the, um, so we discuss terms for conservation easement. Um, I just, it's easier to just use an example. Let's say I'm working with a rancher who's got a 5,000 acre track of land and the state very much is interested in protecting this property. It might have some endangered species on it. It might have some endangered imperiled habitat, which it likely does. Uh, and it may very well be next to or could be next to other conservation properties. So it provides a buffer. Uh, those are perfect candidates for easements. Uh, but, you know, the landowner, you know, he's not, his, he needs to be able to operate his operation, right? He needs to be able to conduct his cattle operations or farming operations, whatever he's doing on the property, somewhat unfettered. Um, and so you negotiate the terms of what that looks like. But there are also other considerations. Let's say that, that Mr. Rancher has three children. And said rancher is, you know, in his 50s or 60s. And, you know, he's thinking about, you know, I'm, I need to think long term. What am I going to do with the ranch? Do I split it up and give it to three of my children? Um, and what if those three children would all like to have a house? So, so some of the terms of the easements, you need to consider those things. If you're a landowner, what, what are we going to do in the future? And so he may decide, well, I'd like to divide this property three times and give it to each one of my children. And I'd like for them to have the ability to put a house on each one of those subdivisions. Well, those are things we need to negotiate in the, in the terms of the easement up front so people know that you have that right to do it. Um, your agricultural operations typically, um, most easements are what I would call status quo easements. Um, you get to kind of maintain the property like it is um, without necessarily being able to develop some of the native habitat. You might have native habitat on your property, meaning it's not in pasture land now, but you may not want to convert it or it may not be converted. Oft oftentimes that's in an easement. There are some easements that will allow you to do the conversion of some of those into pasture land, um, but typically that's one of those issues that you need to discuss and that um, goes to goals and objectives of the easement. So one of the other things I would say about a conservation easement that you need to, your landowner needs to understand is that when you do the easement, they are done in perpetuity and they are a legal document and they are binding on you, your heirs, or anybody you sell that property to in the future. And so, um, when you do the easement, there is this uh, instrument called a baseline documentation report or easement documentation report. It could be used by any different uh, nomenclatures, but bottom, bottom line is you're taking a snapshot of what the property is and you're identifying what's on the property, where the roads are, where the pastures are, where the timberland is, where the native land is, uh, where there might be some structures, cow pens, any of those kinds of things, because it the easement all either provides restrictions or uses to those various kinds of properties. And so you as a landowner need to make sure you understand and agree with the actual assessment that's done and what it's identifying on the property because that is the Bible. That is the reference back to in 30 years from now, if there's a question on the easement, it is where the, that's what the reference, point of reference is to be used to decide whether you uh, infringe on the easement or not. Another question that comes up to me sometimes from time to time is, can I change the easement? Can I make uses to it? Is there flexibility? Can I, can I get out of it? Well, if you're thinking about, even remotely thinking about trying to get out of it or amending it in the future, it's probably not for you, honestly. However, there are things that come up. Uh, conditions change, things change, and there may be been things that you didn't anticipate when you did the easement. And so could it be amended? Yes, absolutely. It's, it takes two parties to agree to the terms of the easement, and you could amend the easement with the same form. You just go back, if two parties agree to make an amendment to the easement, it could be done. So somebody might say, hey, I'd like to put another house out here 
or I would like to say that my minimum size acreage that I could sell off is not 500, it's 300. Well, like in most things, it's a negotiation and a discussion. So if you were to approach the government and say, assuming one, it was one of the government entities that owned the easement, and ask for a permission to have another house, they might say to you, well, what are you going to give us? What's the consideration that we're going to give on behalf of the taxpayers of the state of Florida for your ability to build another house? Because it has some economic value to you. And you might say, well, I'll agree to add another 100 acres into the conservation easement that I never put into the easement to begin with. That's consideration. Or government might say, well, it's going to cost you $50,000. Reimburse us $50,000 and we'll allow you to build another housing unit out here. There's, so there's always the ability to negotiate an amendment to the instrument, but don't go into it thinking that you're gonna be able to do that just on a wholesale scale basis.